morning and welcome to our Hopesbury Zone worship. Today we are here in Ebenezer Church and today we celebrate the 43rd anniversary of the Union, the United Church in Australia. It's the union of the three denominations in Australia. The Congregational Church, the Presbyterian Church, and the Methodist Church. And also, it's the uh, 211th years of the Ebenezer United Church. As you know, Ebenezer Church is the oldest church in Australia. So welcome to our worship celebration. So for thousands of years, indigenous people have walked in this land on their own country. And their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Darug and Darkindun people and their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Ebenezer is a safe place for all people to worship regardless of race, creed, age, cultural background, or sexual orientation. We remember with gratitude the original custodian of the land on which we now gather and ask for God's grace to be good stewards of this place with them and to strive for reconciliation between all who share it. For our call to worship, let us be one. The Christ waits in hope for that time and calls to the people of God to relate in love and deep respect. One day, we will all be one in Jesus Christ. Our faith will set us free to listen to wrestle together for the truth, and to humbly hear what others believe, one day we will all be one in Jesus Christ. When that day comes, the Holy Spirit will dance in the light, and the people of God will join hands in hope. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, Present with us now, you are the same Spirit who speaks with it in all of the body of Christ. Help us to know more clearly what you say to us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Let us sing number uh, 52 of the From Together in the Song. Let us sing to the God of salvation.
today we're going to hear a story about how when we all work together, we work together in God. In our Gospel reading later today, we'll be hearing from the 17th chapter. And that chapter talks about God wanting us all to be in Jesus. And there's just one plain, simple way for that to happen. And that is with kindness. Kindness towards those people we know. Kindness towards those people who perhaps don't like us even. Kindness is Jesus' way. Let us now hear our story. Our story for this week is called We Are Together by Britta Teckentrop. On our own, we're special and we can chase our dream. But when we join up hand in hand, together we're a team. We may travel alone, free as birds in the sky, but flocking together, we soar and we fly. If, a st if storm clouds gather and we're caught in the rain, let us splash through the puddles till the sun shines again. We can change the world with the power of words, let us all rock the boat so our voices are heard. Hear the song we sing to encourage and inspire. When we all sing together, one voice becomes a choir. Walking all together on paths yet unknown may lead us to places that feel just like home. We're off to climb mountains all the way to the top. Our friends keep us going. They won't let us stop. Embrace all life's colours, each shade, every hue, and life will be brighter whenever you do. When icy winds blow and winter takes hold, your friends keep you warm so you won't feel the cold. When life is confusing and our way seems unclear, the horizon is distance. The horizon is distant, but our friends will stay near. At the end of each day, as we watch the night fall, a million bright stars shine down on us all. If ever we're lonely, we'll just say out loud, let's all stand together, one big happy crowd. Let us now have a prayer. Holy God, you gather the children of the world under the wings of a dove. May your spirit form connections of kindness between them all. No matter where they come from. And may that kindness be fill their hearts with the love that God has for them so that even as children they will share 
Jesus love amongst themselves. Holy God, it is kindness, Jesus kindness, that binds us all together into one big happy crowd. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to God. Let us pray. O God, so often we hold to a faith which has been handed down by our forebears. It has become sacred to us in its familiarity and because our mothers and fathers lived from it with conviction and integrity, it is hard for us to question it now or to hear from those who have inherited another great tradition. We feel as though all is well with us and that others may be mistaken or misguided. Forgive us, us if we are in what we believe, believe Jesus, Jesus Christ. Open our hearts to listen and learn, we pray. O Christ, sometimes we are tempted to live with long-held certainties, as though there is no more to learn from you and from each other. We feel safer in our needles of clarity and fear to move outside of them. Forgive us if we are fixed in what we believe, Jesus Christ. Open our hearts to listen and learn, we pray. Amen. And after the confession, here is the words of assurance. There is one sure pillar of our faith. God, in Jesus Christ, brings us grace upon grace when we are prepared to be humble, and even in our own weaknesses, love is there for us. We are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our scripture reading. Let us now hear the promise of, of God in Scripture. Reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 14 to 23, from the New Living Translation. Again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, take a piece of wood and carve on it these words. This represents Judah and all the tribes. Then take another piece and carve these words on it. This represents Ephraim and the northern tribes of Israel. Now hold them together in your hand as if they were one piece of wood. When your people ask you what your actions mean, say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will take Ephraim and the northern tribes and join them to Judah. I will make them one piece of wood in my hand. Then hold out the pieces of wood you have inscribed so the people can see them and give them this message from the Sovereign Lord. I will gather the people of Israel from among the nations. I will bring them home to their own land from places where they have been scattered. I will unify them into one nation. No longer will they be divided, one king to rule them all. They will not be divided into two kingdoms. They will never again pollute themselves with their idols 
and vile images and rebellion, for I have saved them from their sinful apostasy. I will cleanse them, and then they will be truly my people, and I will be their God. Amen. And for our uh, Psalms reading, and uh, it's found in uh, uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes grow up and tribes of the Lord Praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And may those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, Peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. And uh, from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, and verses 20 to 26. I'm reading of the New International Version. Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them. And will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever noticed the colours that are in our symbol of the United Church? Black, white and red. Black is for the earth that's in darkness. Even in the blackness of creation, God said it was good. Have you ever seen pictures from space of the earth at night? We have white. And on the symbol of our church, we 
we see a white shape, a U, perhaps that for uniting, or maybe the symbol of a cup. We also have the white cross, the cross of Christ under which we all stand. For we know that the United Church is not a democracy, but it is a Christocracy. It looks a bit like an anchor, doesn't it? The cross sitting in the U. And the U could be a boat. Anchors and boats have long been Christian symbols. But also there's that splash of colour. That colour that comes to us sometimes when we just don't know. Flitting, flying, or as a flame. Resting. Helping us shape our life. But we're not just a symbol. There are things that we hold to. We hold to the books of the Old and New Testament. We hold to Scripture. And we hold to Jesus Christ as the living Word of God. The lens through which we look at the world. The lens through which we look at our sacred stories. For this book is full of sacred stories, full of wonderful sacred stories that prompt us to reflect, that inspire us to new beginnings. But since 1977, when the church began its life, we have also recognised parts of our lives that we have not acknowledged. The Uniting Church began out of confession. Confession made by the Presbyterian, the Methodist Church and the Congregational Church. That they were not living into Christ's gift and will for us being unity. And so we look around us and think, what else have we forgotten? One of the wonderful things about our church is that it has made a statement on multiculturalism. I have wonderful Indonesian fabrics here, which will, I will add to our table. Representing the multicultural church that is part of us today. An important part of us as their voices bring new insights and perspectives to the ones that perhaps we take for granted. Also, we acknowledge the United Aboriginal and Islander Christian Congress. And right now I have my back, unfortunately, to an Aboriginal painting that sits in this church. And I now have to make confession that I don't know the name of this artist, and I don't know the name of her work. But the cross of Christ is very clear to see. I make confession that there are Indigenous names that we have forgotten, and that there are Indigenous names that we need to seek out, find and honour them for their contribution. To our land. And so with that, I'll share the Aboriginal flag for our Indigenous members 
again offer us a new perspective on who we are as the United Church. In our United Church readings for this anniversary, we heard from the book of Ezekiel that God will make Judah and Israel one once again. God is looking for our togetherness, looking for our unity. Christ's gift and will for the church, of course, is unity, a coming together. And in the Gospel of John, we hear about abiding in Jesus as Jesus abides in God. And as I have said to the children earlier, we need more kindness if we are to live into that. We need to listen to different stories to our own and reflect on, I wonder why that person thinks that before we begin to judge that because it's not like our story, it's not right. We are the United Church. We live under Christ's rule of unity. And so we have strong ecumenical ties because we are uniting, because we haven't united yet. Amen. A prayer now for our church. Let us pray. Gracious and journeying God, we long to be those whose call to unity we live into, to be the ones who lead us in your mission for good. We pray that we will recognise all those when they enter our doors, even if they seem different from ourselves. We pray we will look outwards into our community and beyond that into the world so that we can see where righteous and prophetic life is needed. We pray for your uniting church in this time of challenge and change. We pray for the strength to be you, to be your church in the world, a world that has turned upside down. How can we be a church now turned upside down? We will need your courage to stand with others as they stand in justice. Lift up our hearts so that we may see the joy beyond the costliness of the risen life which follows the challenges. Every time that we hold your sacred life in our hands, may we believe that it is all we need to enrich who we are in courage and faith, we pray. In Jesus' name and his call to unity. Amen. Let us uh, sing Seek Ye First.
intercession, let us pray. O God, we praise you for the miracle which is always possible in your strength. The reality of a church united in love and respect. This picture of hope lies before us because you offer it to us. We believe that the wisdom of the Spirit could lead us down pathways of dialogue which are new to us. We thank you that you never let us go, O God, always calling us on to greater things than we have ever seen. Holy Christ, you pray that we all may be one, and we join with you in that prayer today. Give to us a new humility as we engage with those who have different beliefs. Help us to look into their faces and see our common humanness and the light of your life within them. Excite us with possibilities of learning from each other, stimulated by fresh perceptions of the faith. We pray now for the wider church, the people pray, show us where to begin, O God. As we try to move across all divisions and to meet and hear our sisters and brothers in Christ, keep our minds and hearts open to listen and learn and to know how we can work together for you, we pray. As we speak yet again your prayer for us, echo in our souls the hope of a time when all your people will be one and will bring a new model of love to the world. Amen. So now go into the world in the power of Jesus Christ to reconcile differences and to spread the love of God. And may we see others with the eyes of Christ, greet them with the healing love of the Holy Spirit and work across differences through the everlasting gifts of the Creator. Amen. And uh, can you open your book number 755 and uh, let us sing uh, uh, Trees of the Field. <laughs> 